Hello, I am Olivia Miller, Curator of Exhibitions at the University of Arizona Museum of Art. And I'm here to talk a bit about one of the highlights from our permanent collection, Avalanche by Wind, painted by Alexander Hogue in 1944. In this brief video, I'll give you five facts or observations about the painting that I hope will give you more insight into this incredible work. Let's start by simply looking at the painting and identifying some of its main features. Here we have a rural outdoor scene. The painting is bisected by a railroad track that begins in the immediate foreground of the painting and extends into the background at the horizon line. The tracks are partially covered with sand and dust that has spilled over from the huge mound on the left side of the painting. In the upper left corner, dark, turbulent clouds have formed. Clearly a storm is coming, preceded by strong winds that have blown the sand so high it has overcome the railroad tie fence and is creeping up the telephone poles. On the upper right-hand corner of the painting, we see a windmill, a water tank, and a farmhouse set against a blue sky. The artist leads our eye into the distance through the lines of the railroad tracks and the lines of the telephone wires, which converge at the horizon. It is at this point we see the train coming around the corner. We also see the only human figure in the painting, a man standing on the tracks waving a flag, trying to get the train conductor's attention. It is an almost helpless scene. Will the train see the man and stop in time before it is derailed by the sand? Even if the train does manage to stop, then what? With this huge storm coming, what happens next? Now that we've taken a look at some of the main visual components of the painting, let's get into some facts about the work. Fact number one. Alexander Hogue grew up in Texas, mainly in Denton and Dallas. His love for nature was really nurtured by his time spent on his sister's ranch, which was in the Texas Panhandle. There, he would often work in the garden, tend to the animals, and go camping. He loved the grassland area of the Texas Panhandle and lamented the loss of that scenery to overcultivation. Fact number two. Avalanche by Wind is part of a larger group of painting called the Erosion Series, in which Hogue depicted the devastating outcomes of wind and water erosion on the land, on livestock, and on people. He was very concerned with the farming practices that had been happening over the past few decades, where overplowing had stripped the land of its native grasses. Without the grasses to hold the topsoil in place, windstorms wreaked havoc on the land, leading to the Dust Bowl, which is considered one of the worst environmental and economic disasters in the United States. Hulk said he was not trying to do a social critique, but at the same time, he felt an urgency to paint what he saw and to offer a sort of wake up call. Fact number three, most of the paintings in the erosion series were painted in the 1930s during the Dust Bowl. However, Hogue revisited the subject in the 1940s when he was approached by Encyclopedia Britannica to create this work as an illustration for the children's encyclopedia. He took a five week leave of absence from his job as a production illustrator at North American Aviation in order to create this work. Fact number four, this painting is a rare one in the erosion series and that it depicts a human figure. Whereas the other paintings in the series imply human presence through the depiction of buildings, machinery, or an anthropomorphic landscape. Fact number five. After the Dust Bowl ended, Hogue moved into more abstract work. He often responded to the time he was living in, in terms of observation, so his work was constantly changing and evolving. However, his work was almost always rooted in the concept of nature and observation. There is no way we can say everything about this painting in only five minutes. So where do we go from here? I want to leave you with some questions and ideas to consider. Where are we as viewers placed? How does that vantage point affect the mood or our feelings about the painting? This painting is full of objects that have their own histories and meanings. For example, what else can we learn about the history of the railroad in this country? Just beyond the first telephone pole, we see a broken wire. Why did Hogue include that detail? What might it symbolize? Take notice of the railroad track junction in the foreground of the painting. You can also see the red switch just to the left of the tracks. 
Why would Hogue include this option for the train to change course? What might that mean? Lastly, I want you to think about whether or not this painting has modern day relevance. If so, how? We would love to hear from you. Please feel free to leave us your thoughts about these questions or any other comments you have in the comment box. Thank you for joining us.